Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, uh, welcome again to EMWCon. My name is Yaron Koren. Um, um, and I apologize for my voice. I've been just, uh, I guess, yelling a lot. I don't remember yelling, but I, I guess I have been uh, just talking a lot for the last few days, trying to help uh, set up the room and everything. Um, <clears throat> so we're going <clears> to, <throat> excuse me, we're going to be talking about Enterprise Media Wiki. Um, first of all, my company's uh, uh, Genesis and WikiWorks, that's the, the, they're my companies in different ways, uh, but, uh, but most of my day is spent on uh, uh, doing uh, w work for Genesis for the Information Experience Group. Um, <coughs> uh, WikiWorks does media con wiki consulting and it, it's, very, it's very much uh, a live operation uh, also. Um, and check out my book and my podcast. Um, so let's go through a little bit of the history. Uh, in 2001, Wikipedia was created by these two handsome gentlemen. There's some controversy over who exactly did what, and now they hate each other, but that's another story. Um, so then they were already used, they were using existing wiki software for Wikipedia, but they decided to create their own software. I think it started in 2002, although it got its name in 2003, so it depends on how you look at it, I guess. Uh, and there's the little uh, sunflower logo, which you have probably seen before. Um, just my very personal opinion, uh, the, the key features of MediaWiki, I guess I should mention just the robustness of it. Uh, but I think the big innovations that it brought are, were uh, templates, parser functions, and namespaces. Really, I'm only going to be talking about templates, I think, in this talk. But um, that's my opinion. That, 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 uh, all of this stuff that we're doing wouldn't really be possible without templates and, and parser functions and, I guess, namespaces. <clears throat> um, so, yeah, so, so very soon after uh, MediaWiki started, people started using it outside of the Wikimedia. Wikimedia, sorry, I should have mentioned Wiki, Wikimedia. That are the people who, well, I guess it was mentioned in the talks. So I'm rambling. Um, uh, outside of the, the Wikimedia sites like Wikipedia, of course, and Wiktionary and all of those. Uh, so a big first one that started was, was originally called Wiki, Wiki Cities. Now it's called Wiki, although soon they're going to change their name to Fandom. Uh, it's, it's an extremely popular farm, uh, Wiki farm. It's, it's by far the biggest. Uh, I think they're in the top 50 sites overall. I could at, le at least top 100. Um, um, and then uh, Semantic Media Wiki came out and was released by these two other handsome fellows. Uh, there are better photos for both of them, but I tried to find one from around uh, 2005. Uh, this is Marcus Crutch and, and uh, the other guy is Denny Vranditich who's uh, here with us. Um, so yeah, so uh, Semantic Media Wiki, a lot of you know it already, but, but very briefly the idea is, um, the, originally, I, the original idea for it was, you have a page named, say, California. <coughs> Sorry. Um, and so you can say the, Cal the cap capital of California is Sacramento, but that's not machine readable. It's not something you can use. But then if you put the, the nice uh, SMW tag around it, then all of a sudden you, you're storing it in a database. You can query and do all sorts of stuff with it. Uh, so then just a little bit of extra uh, work you need to do. You also need to create a page called pr uh, property, a property page for that for this property and uh, assign it a type. And now it's you know, starting to look like programming, uh, but it's all within the wiki. And then uh, this is a very, very brief introduction to Semantic Media Wiki, but it has cool visualizations. This one is from, uh, from translatewiki.net, which some of you know very well. Um, and, and cool calendars. This one is actually from Marcus's own uh, wiki. He runs a wiki to, uh, to manage uh, his uh, depar university department. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, th those are the, the, the standard cool visualizations. But of course, you can also do tables and lists and outlines and, and just the, the more standard type of uh, uh, results. Um, just briefly, to put it in context, I mean, Semantic Media Wiki, when it came out, was part of a, a, a big surge of interest in, in the so-called semantic web, um, <clears throat> uh, which, well, it's still, it's, it's still happening. But as far as you know, interest is in the popular press, it, it sort of peaked around maybe 
2009, I would say. Others may disagree with that. Uh, so yeah, it was part of a big upswell of, uh, of interest and software related to the semantic web. So actually a lot of people don't know this, but it was one of many uh, semantic uh, wiki engines that came out at the time. Uh, a lot of these were academic projects, but then again, semantic media wiki itself started out as an academic project too. Uh, so you, you, I don't know if anyone's heard of any of these. Uh, well, some people have, but um, um, yeah, these all existed, and, and some of them had users, uh, but they all, uh, they all became unmaintained within the next five years or so. Definitely by, by 2012, I think none of these were, uh, were still active. Yeah, there was even one that was a plugin for Confluence, which was pretty cool, although I think, it was, I think it was hampered by the fact that Confluence doesn't have templates, which really made the whole thing kind of unusable. Uh, that's my sense anyway. Okay. Um, in 2007, <laughs> this is when I uh, got my start in the, uh, the, the community in the, this world. Uh, I released an extension called Semantic Forms. It's still my post most popular extension. Uh, it, it was the first one that had the word that that, that started the semantic something convention. Um, uh, so yeah, I mean, in the beginning, it really was tied in with Semantic Media Wiki. I actually, the original plan was just to put it into Semantic Media Wiki, but uh, I made it a separate extension. Uh, and initially, it let users define forms to edit pages uh, that call SMW-based info box templates. So the idea is, um, <clears throat> unlike that first example I showed where it's on a page called California, the idea is it enforces the idea that, that you should always put SMW properties within templates and then <clears throat> have the template handle everything, uh, the structure, the, uh, the storage, um, uh, yeah, I guess that's the two main, the display. Um, uh, eventually was renamed to page forms, which is the name you may know it as. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's, that's still essentially what it does, but it doesn't have the, 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 the direct uh, semantic media wiki connection anymore, but it's still uh, about creating and editing uh, info box calls within pages. So yeah, I mean, I guess it's pretty obvious what, uh, you know, what the benefit is of using a form, but if you don't have a form, this is what you have to deal with, and, you know, in a very simple uh, page about, movie, about a movie, you have to, <clears throat> first of all, <clears throat> You have to uh, know the, the, the syntax. You have to know what the allowed parameters are. You have to know uh, what the allowed values or uh, syntax is for each of these fields. Whereas with a form, you just have to worry about the data. The, 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 you know, the, the, the form takes care of everything. You, you, don't really, you don't actually need to know that this even exists in the background. Uh, it just works like any other um, web, uh, form on the web. Um, so then, a, a very brief uh, introduction to page forms, which is a, a rather has become a rather complex uh, uh, amount of syntax. But this is this is the uh, uh, this more or less creates that form that you saw. Excuse me. <clears throat> uh, you specify the template that you want the form to create, uh, and you can have more than one template. But if if you, there's just one template on the page then you have that, and then uh, each of these field tags will get translated into a field in the form. Uh, so you noticed in the previous slide, there's no, um, wait, yeah, okay. Uh, the, the genre is a drop down Here, it doesn't list what the values are, so how does it know that the, the set, that set of values, how does it know that it should be a drop dropdown? Um, in this case, it goes and, and parses the template and sees, uh, you know, if it's calling semantic media wiki property uh, and that property has a set of allowed values, it, it you know, uh, parses all of that and, and tries to be as smart as possible. And the same with cargo, which we'll get to. Um, but, you, but there's a whole bunch of uh, additional parameters you can add onto each of these to manually set all of that stuff, like if you wanted uh, a date input or a map input type or whatever it is. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, so it's a combination of it trying to be smart and then being able to override anything in that. So yeah, so you know, it's, it's um, <clears throat> fairly simple to set up a simple form. Um, so yeah, so back to the history. So we were in 2007, 
At that point, uh, there starts to be an explosion of SMW-based extensions. Some really are, are more extensions for semantic forms, as it was called then, uh, but, but because that was part of the overall system, they were still usually called semantic something. Uh, now I have a, a, a question. Does anybody have a guess or, or think they know roughly how many SMW-based extensions have been released? You know, whether they start with semantic, the word semantic, or uh, just anything else? 17. 17. About 120. <clears throat> um, yeah, I was surprised too when I, uh, I uh, looked into it. Um, so I thought it would be fun to uh, put together a little analysis. Um, so I went through each of these extensions to see when they were released, and I put this graph together. Um, so um, the, the lines in blue are the total set of extension, number of extensions that were released that year, and then the ones in red are the ones that are still active. Um, so you can see a few interesting things from this graph. Um, it more or less traces a nice uh, parabola, um, and we're on the tail end of it. Um, there's one big exception to that, which is in 2009. Um, the, the main reason for that big bump is a, a, a set of extensions called SMW Plus, which some of you may remember. It was all uh, it was paid for with uh, funds from the, the late Paul Allen, who was funding. Uh, some, some work related to, um, I guess, AI and Semantic Media Wiki. Um, so yeah, um, so it, it hit its peak. Uh, there's, there's basically, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> man, I'm, I'm gonna lose my voice by the end of this talk. Um, there's basically one or two extensions that came out every year uh, that, that, uh, that, that still exist, and some of these aren't actually SMW based anymore, like page forms is included in here and external data and stuff like that. Um, uh, and uh, just mathematically, I guess you'd have to guess that the more recent ones will, will uh, befall the same fate, I guess, that there'll be one or two uh, left over. Um, so yeah, th there's, uh, nothing came out in 2017. There's one extension that came out in 2018. Nothing yet in 2019, I think. So basically, the, in the, there's been only one extension new extension released in the last two years. Um, draw your own conclusions, I guess, I don't know, but uh, there's definitely a, a maturing of the overall system. I mean, we're, we're far past the days when everybody just had some little niche need and created a new extension and, and all that. I, I, hopefully that's a sign that the, the software is getting more powerful and the people don't need to, uh, people can use existing functionality for all of this. Uh, and just to show my work, if you don't believe me on these numbers here, you can see, uh, you can peruse this at, at home or something. Uh, uh, this is all the, that, that big set of extensions and uh, you can see all those. Take a trip down memory lane, I guess, if, you're, if you remember any of these. Um, so, okay, so uh, on with the history. Uh, in 2009, we had the first ever SMWCon. We had, we had uh, some meetings before that, but was, this was the first under that name. Uh, Marcus came up with the name, actually. Uh, it was in Cambridge, Mass, at MIT. Some, some of you were there. Um, and we've had, uh, well, for a while, we had two every year. Now there's one every year. Um, 2011 Visual Editor release. This is not part of the Enterprise Media Wiki ecosystem. It's, 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 uh, it's created by the Wikimedia Foundation, and it's used on Wikipedia. But uh, it's, uh, it's an important uh, extension for a lot of uh, enterprise users, I think, and, and, and becoming more important, I would say. So it was pretty, it was kind of buggy early on and slow and everything, but at this point I think it works quite well. So here is just a screenshot. This is the Daily City page. It looks just like the Daily City article. There's only a few hints that you can tell that you're actually viewing an editing interface and not the real article. Um, uh, so yeah, it's really cool. It's, it's, it's indeed WYSIWYG, as, as they say. Um, uh, another, this falls into the same category, the Scribunto extension, uh, another extension that came out the next year. Um, it, uh, uh, it allows for defining modules, so you basically can create a set of code in your wiki, uh, and it uses a scripting language, Lua. Not a lot of people are using this uh, in Enterprise MediaWiki yet, but I, I think a lot of people would benefit from using it. Uh, 
So just here is a cool example of it. This is on, all for Wikipedia. They have, um, they have templates for displaying chessboards. <clears throat> this was all generated by a template. Um, so this is what it used to look like to create this thing, this, this monstrosity. Uh, it basically had to go through every single square. It's just, just a, a, a ton of weird stuff. And you, you just get the sense that if you change one character, any one character on here, the whole thing will, will uh, break. Uh, um, so more of that, yeah, just, <laughs> so this, this actually calls another template, chess diagram row, and then that's what this looks like. It's a little better, I guess, I don't know. Um, so now if you look at the template, all it does is invoke this one module, uh, and then the module looks like this. It, uh, the, the details aren't that important, just the idea that now you can actually have code that looks like code and is a little less frightening, hopefully. Um, okay, on to 2015. We're getting near, closer to our own time. Um, uh, I, I created this extension called Cargo. Uh, it's, it caused some, some drama uh, early on because, you know, I was essentially competing with some anti-media wiki. Uh, but it, um, <clears throat> the, uh, the idea is it stores data in, in, a, in a table instead of it via triples. Uh, but the functionality is more or less the same. Um, so um, here's just a, a brief a bit of cargo syntax. Uh, so we have, you know, this, this, uh, this call to state or province. I just made up that template name. Uh, so then these are the two key uh, calls, cargo declare and cargo store. In cargo declare, you specify uh, the table that corresponds to that template, the database table, and whatever fields it has and their types. And then cargo store actually does it. So these are equivalent to those two things we saw before, more or less, uh, for semantic media. We can first the tag and then the the property setting where you specify the type. But here it's all integrated in one thing into the template. Uh, so it's a little uh, simpler structure. Uh, OK, so on, wait, did I put things in the wrong order? Sorry. No, OK, sorry. No, keep going. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I'll get to that later. Uh, two. OK, I should have turned on my phone. There. Turning off, turning off. Um, in 2016, uh, the, the, uh, the North American SMWCon became EMWCon. That was the very first EMWCon. It was in New York. Um, uh, before that, we had one in North America and one in Europe every year. Uh, so um, it's, I, I, I think it's been a popular name change, and nobody's really uh, objected to it. In Europe, it's a different story. Um, uh, but I, I think, it, it, among other things, it proved the, the, the viability of the term Enterprise Media Wiki, which hadn't really been used until then. The idea that there is this separate thing. It's not just Semantic Media Wiki. It's you know, just wh whatever set of extensions you use. And it's its, its own community uh, and its own set of software, to some extent. Um, so uh, yeah, this is now the fourth EMW on the first on the West Coast. And I have to say, I'm really uh, 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 so a little surprised and pleased that there's been this much turnout. We always thought it had to be on the East Coast because that's where all the people were. But there's, all, well, there's people willing to fly, and there's a lot of uh, interest uh, here, out here as well. Um, this is my personal opinion. Uh, it would be nice to see, I think, the, the European events, which happen in the fall, re be renamed to EMWCon too, because I, I think they too could, could benefit from the, the bigger uh, scope. Um, but anyway, it's not up to me. Um, so yeah, OK, so then that same year? That same year. Uh, semantic forms became page forms. Um, <clears throat> I renamed it because it, uh, because it could now also use cargo. And it just it was a little clear. It was never really semantic anyway. I mean, it, um, it, it was just based on a, a semantic extension. Um, so yeah, so now you can use it with either Semantic Media Wiki or Cargo, or you can just use it with neither, neither and just have forms if you want. Okay, so what is Enterprise Media Wiki? I mean, um, <clears throat> uh, 
literally speaking, yeah, it's most literally, it's just any use of uh, MediaWiki outside of the, the, the Wikimedia sites. Uh, anytime uh, somebody sets up MediaWiki, they're, they're an enterprise MediaWiki user. Um, there's, there is, I think, um, <clears throat> Tied in with that, I, I, this, th I think there's more of an interest in using the wiki for data rather than just as a, as a way to store big articles, which is, of course, the, the Wikipedia approach. Um, and uh, what I, I just came up with this term, the supremacy of the info box. I don't know if that's going to catch on. I, just, I don't know how catchy that is. Um, but the idea that um, the there can be a, a, a lot of perfectly valid pages that just hold an info box and don't have you know, a ton of uh, long explanation and stuff. Uh, and tied in with that, there's a, a big group of extensions, not just ones related to info boxes and stuff, but a, a bunch of extensions and some skins that aren't uh, used on any of the Wikimedia sites. So yeah, just some thoughts about info boxes. If I've used the word info boxes before, I haven't really explained it. This is again the article on Daily City, and here's uh, if you look at any Wikipedia article, you can see all that structured data there. Um, it's it's all it's very well structured. It's very informative, but it's not being stored anywhere. But that's Wikipedia, of course. It has its own uh, um, uh, set of uh, you know. It's a lot. There's a lot happening. Uh, there with Wikidata and everything else, but um, that's an info box. Um, yeah, okay, so I already said that. Uh, right, pages usually, pages can consist of just an info box. Um, yeah, so, so why I think smart info boxes are so, uh, so great um, is because when you add in forms as well, um, <clears throat> It, makes, it means the data is both easily editable and queryable. It really is the best of both worlds. You get, you know, from when just looking at it, it just looks like a database. So, so, so you know, um, it, it has all the structure of a normal database-driven site, whatever it is. Uh, but then, in addition to that, you have a full version history uh, uh, of everything, not just of the data, but of the structure. And you can undo everything, uh, which makes it... Uh, uh, extremely uh, safe to use, and you can open up your your data and, and editing to the world if you want. Uh, and it, additionally, it offers flexibility um, <clears throat> in terms of the fact that everything is text based, which makes it very easy to uh, to modify stuff. Um, yeah, this is really really critical. No data is ever lost, not even if you delete a field. I mean, um, if you um, in a traditional database backed uh, website, I, I, I don't know of any uh, examples of, of software that powers that, that that will actually preserve all the data in fields that have been deleted. Uh, and here it's, it's all just in the page, in, in the page history. Uh, so if you re-add it, you may need to revert a bunch of pages, but, you, but uh, it's always there somewhere. Um, yeah, this is just a random thought I, w I had as I was uh, creating this uh, presentation. Uh, my, uh, my daughter has a bunch of uh, cards like this. Uh, this is from the, uh, the Shopkins series. So I was looking at it and I thought, this is not just you know, a, a, um, you know something uh, it, pleasant to look at for kids. Um, if you look at all the parts of this card, this is a fully structured data set. Um, it, it's, it's got both a, a grouping and a subgrouping. This is under fruit and vegetables in the Chef Club. Um, so yeah, what is that? Why do I mention that? Just because I, I think it, it shows that the, the, the desire to create all this structured data and to categorize everything is not just some esoteric thing. It's sort of an instinctive desire that we have even from a, from a small age. Uh, and it's, it's, it's you know, sort of what, part of what makes us human, I guess, is, is, uh, is the, the desire to, to deal with structured data. Uh, OK, so back to uh, Enterprise MediaWiki. Um, as well, as we saw during the introductions, it's used by, uh, by a lot of different um, companies and organizations. Uh, there's a lot of personal use to people putting notes and stuff. And, and, MediaWiki. 
Uh, I, I think tens of thousands, it could be more than that of active installations, there's no way to tell, but um, uh, the number of consultants and consulting group companies is growing all the time too. I think dozens around the world. Uh, there's a bunch of wiki farms. Um, Wikia Gamepedia, Myra Hees, as it's pronounced, and uh, Refrat are, are some of the examples. Um, I, I don't think there's any other wiki software that powers more than one wiki farm, by the way, as far as I know. Um, uh, I don't know if this is going to be covered, and it seems to always get covered somehow. Uh, the, our competitors, um, SharePoint always comes up, Confluence usually comes up. Uh, they actually use Confluence at Genesis, and, and we're trying to, uh, you know, uh, get people to switch. Um, I, those, I, I guess, are our big competitors. And then there's uh, just, uh, you know, all the, the open source CMSs, Drupal and WordPress, and so for, for maybe less so. But, um, uh, some trends. How are we doing on time? Huh? Oh, okay, cool. Trends I see, um, this is a, a very interesting one. Um, <clears throat> so you can go to some website for, uh, for Acme Consulting, and they say, um, Acme Consulting presents ACMU, or ACMU, a one-stop solution for all your uh, whatever it is needs. Uh, you, may, you may or may not have heard of all these acronyms, CRM, ERP, BPM, GDPR, TOGAF. I, I'm... I actually only know some of these as their acronyms. I don't, I don't really fully know what, what all of these mean. Uh, uh, but um, <clears throat> those are some of the things that, uh, that you may see. Uh, for the low price of uh, $5,000 a month, you get, all this, uh, you get this software plus all the support you need to customize it for your data requirements. Um, so it may or may not even say that this is MediaWiki, that this is a, a solution around MediaWiki that has some extensions and maybe, uh, you know, t templates and forms and, and uh, whatever else. Uh, so it's basically a wiki with a data structure uh, in place, plus consulting, plus the support that they give you. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so sometimes it doesn't say MediaWiki or even wiki. Um, I, 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 it seems to... Oh man, I should have turned off my phone, I'm sorry. I'm turning off my phone. Um, uh, it seems to be a successful formula, <coughs> especially in, <coughs> in Europe. Uh, there's some German companies and other companies uh, who do this kind of thing. Um, I have no problem with that. Uh, I think whatever increases usage is good. Um, and I think uh, people looking to get into uh, business doing MediaWiki should really consider that formula, actually, um, because uh, MediaWiki or wikis can mean very specific things to people. Uh, and as we know, the software can do a lot more than that. Um, so that's one trend. Moving away from the semantic web, this may, may, may or may not be con controversial with anyone here. Uh, I have to big, put a big caveat, outside of Wikidata and Wikibase, um, <clears throat> it's been a while since we've heard any of these terms. Uh, Reasoner, RDF, Sparkle, that kind of thing. Uh, I don't know if any of you have actually heard those terms. All right. Uh, well, so is Wikibase a component of Enterprise Media Wiki? That's, uh, that's an open question, I guess. Um, Wikibase is the, the, the software that powers Wikidata. Um, just a, just a random one, uh, mobile-friendly display is becoming a, a big thing. Uh, it used to be everyone wanted their site to look like Wikipedia because all their users knew how that interface and stuff, and people are really uh, gravitating toward uh, responsive skins, meaning they, they work on any, on like a mobile device or a laptop or whatever else. That's become very popular. Um, and of course, I, well, a lot of people want Wikipedia itself to move to a responsive skin, but uh, that's uh, another story. Um, but yeah, it's interesting, people, <coughs> obviously Wikipedia is, is a giant selling point for the software, but, it, it, but uh, people are, are happy to have their own look to the software. Um, some thoughts about MediaWiki and the Wikimedia Foundation. Um, <coughs> uh, so yeah, MediaWiki is an, un an unusual position. 
um, because the, the software, that the, the, the organization that, that creates it, for the most part, the Wikimedia Foundation, doesn't actually benefit uh, from more usage of it. Um, <coughs> They're really, uh, you know, the obvious focus is Wikipedia and, and their other sites. Um, I mean, you could say, well, it's open source software, so you, can't, you, you don't really you don't benefit at all if, uh, if more people use the software. But that's not really true um, because um, <clears throat> whether it's WordPress or whoever else, as you get more usage, you can get all these revenue streams. You can go into paid hosting or consulting, and of course, you can solicit donations. Uh, from both large corporations, you know, million dollars a year or whatever, and just small donations. Um, uh, yeah, the, the Wikimedia Foundation doesn't do any of those. Well, of course, you say they, they, uh, they, they get donations all the time. Uh, they do, but it's, it's from users of Wikipedia or other sites. Uh, I, don't, I don't think anyone says, oh, I love MediaWiki. Here's, you know, here's my $10 uh, to keep developing it. I don't know. Um, so yeah, I mean, <clears throat> that that happens quite a bit that uh, that some organization or company creates open source software, realizes they're not benefiting from it, so they they hand it off to someone else. And here are some examples: um, Hadoop, Kubernetes, Fabricator, PhoneGap. Uh, PhoneGap is a little iffy because they well, who cares? It doesn't matter. Anyway, um, I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of other examples. Um, <clears throat> These were created within large tech companies, but then they decided to hand off control to, uh, to people who were just con focused on that software, so it wouldn't just be like a side thing at, at, at the, the, the big company. Um, um, so yeah, I mean, should, should the Wikimedia Foundation follow their lead and do the same thing and spin off Wikimedia, uh, MediaWiki and make a MediaWiki Foundation? Who knows? I don't know. Uh, in any case, it's not going to happen anytime soon. Um, uh, so what does that mean for us? Um, <clears throat> well, for one thing, it, it may be helpful to, uh, to have our, uh, the voices, uh, our voices of the Enterprise MediaWiki community uh, heard on core MediaWiki development issues. So that's what the, 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 the MediaWiki stakeholders group is for. That's, that's at least one of their focuses. And there's going to be more discussion of that later. Um, and so you know, the other thing is, you know, you can view that as a, as a negative thing that the, that the organization that produces it doesn't really care about the enterprise side of, th sort of, th side of things. Or you can view it uh, from a positive way and say, you know, and, and that means it's up to us. We can do whatever we want. We can market it however we want. And, and we can create our own consulting uh, companies and hosting options and all that. Um, so, you know. Um, <clears throat> this is something random. I, I, again, I thought of while creating, well, I guess I thought about it a little beforehand, but uh, uh, here's an, an open question. Should Enterprise Media Week have its own name? Um, so there is precedent for this kind of thing. Um, <clears throat> so for instance, Ubuntu, uh, the, the, I don't, would you call it an operating system? I don't know what it is, operating system. Uh, it's, it's based on Debian, which is based on Linux, which includes Linux. Um, so there's, you know, three levels of naming. So, um, so you, so remember ACMU? Um, here, here's, it's back again. So we can say, you know, some company can create their their ACMU solution. Say, well, this is based on whatever this thing is, which would normally be Enterprise MediaWiki, but we could give it its own name, uh, which includes MediaWiki. Um, um, the uh, potential benefits are um, there's benefits to not using the word MediaWiki and maybe to not even using the word Wiki. Uh, it offers more clarity because uh, you know when you say it's this thing and not just MediaWiki, you know you're getting a, a you know a more more or different functionality. Uh, potentially avoiding the word Wiki is good. I don't know. Maybe that's controversial too. Uh, you uh, avoid some copyright issues potentially if you try to to make uh, money in some way. Uh, I don't know. So anyway, that's that's the question. I, uh, there's a, there's a saying that whenever you see a question in a newspaper headline, the answer is always no. So maybe that's the case here. But uh, I don't know. Something to think about, I guess. Um, so. <clears throat> 
I talked before about uh, about cargo and uh, its relationship to semantic media wiki. This uh, I, 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 people ask about it a lot. Um, so just some some thoughts on that. Um, <clears throat> The concept is pretty much exactly the same. Uh, they both let you store data in the wiki, and specifically in, uh, in template calls within pages. Uh, and then you, you can drill down on it. Uh, you can display it in lists, tables, calendars, maps, etc. cetera. Uh, and you can export it, which I didn't cover before. But you can both of them provide an API to, to let you get it in CSV or JSON format or whatever. And they both make your wiki a lot more powerful, yay. Uh, here's a little table of some of the differences between them. Um, this was created by a pro cargo person, myself, so it's <laughs> so it's a little biased. But uh, the big the big thing is that cargo is used as just a table, a relational table structure, as it's called, like uh, database tables or Excel spreadsheets or whatever. And with semantic media, we get all triples. Uh, I didn't actually cover triples, but um, uh, California has capital Sacramento. That's three things that are they're called a, a, tri a triple together. Um, yeah. The only thing I'll, <coughs> I'll say, uh, the only quantifiable thing is that Cargo's per uh, performance definitely is superior to Semantic Media Wikis. Uh, uh, and there's two examples for one from NASA and, uh, and one from Gamepedia, and there's people here from both representing both. If so, you can ask them to corroborate that. Um, uh, yeah, NASA's found uh, NASA found Cargo to be 30% faster, and Gamepedia switched over because um, it was giving better performance. Um, yeah. So, but that, but everything else about the two that is a, is a matter of personal opinion and uh, and what people are used to and so forth. Um, so, um, <clears throat> whether it's ease of use or or anything else, um, yeah. There's there are successful semantic media wiki based wikis and successful cargo based wikis, and there the people are representing both here. So, uh, and some actually use both sometimes even on the same wiki. So, uh, so that's fine too. Um, other, oh no, I didn't finish my slides. <clears throat> I guess you can tell which ones, which extensions I know a lot about and which ones I don't. Um, oh, how embarrassing. Uh, approved revs uh, <clears throat> lets you mark one revision of a page as approved. Um, that's a that's a big uh, that's a very helpful thing. Uh, Wikipedia has its own extension that does that called flagged revs. Although I, I don't know I don't I don't know what's going on with that extension. Um, it doesn't seem to be fully moving forward, I'll, I'll, as far as I can tell. Uh, but approved revs is a lot simpler. It basically, lets you mark one revision of the page as approved. Uh, which is really nice because it means you don't actually have to turn off editing for any page, even a page that's very sensitive, like the main page or something. Uh, anyone can still edit it, but people will only see the approved revision of that page unless an administrator goes through and says, oh, this change looks great. I'll approve this new one. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a nice way to, uh, to prevent, I guess, one of the, one of the standard um, fears or complaints that people have about wikis, which is anyone can edit it, so it's very risky. Um, <clears throat> external data lets you query out outside data sources like, oh, OK, like uh, APIs, DBs, which I have as a, with a lowercase b there. Um, <clears throat> and you can display all the data on your wiki, uh, but it still lives out there and, and some other uh, uh, system uh, and data transfer is is sort of the the reverse of that. The, uh, it also lets you uh, query data, but in that case, you're actually importing it into wiki text within pages, and then the idea is it's going to now live in your wiki. You should never have it where it's live and editable in both outside your wiki and inside your wiki. The um, the, the you should avoid data redundancy and embrace what's also what's known as the single source of truth. Um, um, so yeah, so those two together uh, can handle a lot of the a lot of uh, 
needs with uh, outside data, whether you want to just uh, just display it or whether you want to actually move it and have it be edited inside and have it be editable within the wiki. And finally, OAuth, I thought it was important, but not important enough to actually write anything about it. Uh, but there's a lot of, uh, uh, well, I might have changed it anyway, just because there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a, a, a lot of different uh, extensions uh, now to, uh, to let you do uh, login, correct me if I'm wrong on this, well, uh, single sign-on and, and integration, login integration with outside systems, whether it's your company's LDAP server or, or whatever else. Uh, so that's really useful. I, uh, I, I, I think it's a, it's a pretty standard need to, to try to avoid uh, employees having to log into uh, to the wiki if, if you already have them signed into the system or something. Uh, how are we doing on time? Oh, well, okay. Uh, great. Uh, I, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, <clears throat> so I didn't actually show any uh, demos uh, of any of this stuff, uh, but we can talk about whatever people want to talk about. Uh, I can, if anybody has questions about any of that, or I can show some, some more examples of forms or querying or something. Oh, this is, okay. I do want to make a few comments on a few things. Actually, one of the things that you stated were, for example, that the Wikimedia Foundation doesn't benefit from media wiki installation outside. And I just think this is just plain wrong. Um, having external uh, installations, having more users of the software makes the user more robust. It gets tested in different ways. So you find errors in the code, you find new use cases, you make the code better over time. And you also actually increase the number of developers working on MediaWiki by having more external users, obviously, <coughs> which is, uh, again, beneficial for the Wikimedia Foundation because they increase the pool of people they can hire that are actually already knowledgeable about this stuff. Uh, about this stuff. And as you know, they have hired a lot of people who are knowledgeable of, about MediaWiki. Um, and, um, and it's also the other way around. Um, having the Wikimedia Foundation supporting MediaWiki gives you an extreme advantage for the usage of MediaWiki uh, in the outside world, in an enterprise setting, for example, because right. you know your software is going to be around in 10 years. For how many open source projects? Can you say that? I mean, <clears throat> the fact that <clears throat> Wikipedia is not going away for a while, and the fact that Wikipedia is not going to switch away from MediaWiki means <clears throat> that you have more <clears throat> Uh, that, that you have actually a higher confidence in using the software of MediaWiki than you have in any of the other softwares out there. Confluence might be gone in five years. Microsoft SharePoint <coughs> can be shut down in two years. Um, but MediaWiki will be there in 10 years. 20 years, who knows, but that long you won't be staying at your company probably. So um, I think you're, you're actually not really showing the advantages of the setting sufficiently, which uh, I think <laughs> can be turned very well in the other way around. And so those are things that are hugely advantageous for all of the people here. Um, everyone here, be it NASA, be it the Ministry of Defense, be it whoever, benefits from the fact that the software will be around for so long. And the Media Wiki Foundation, uh, sorry, Wikimedia Foundation <coughs> benefits from the fact that there are external people working on this and improving the software, which means every improvement they don't have to develop themselves, well, it's cheap. <laughs> um, and there's stuff that the Wikimedia Foundation just won't prioritize because it's not that important for them, but that can happen externally. And the foundation will probably be happy with helping those people to actually develop those things. So th that's really the point that I wanted to, 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 to point out. <laughs> Uh, yeah. I, well, I just want to respond. Yeah, the, uh, great. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you said all of those things. Yeah, actually, I, I'm, I, I meant to include a slide talking about the, the benefits of Wikipedia. I realized as I was making it that I, I was only presenting negative things about the Wikimedia Foundation, which wasn't my intent. Um, uh, no, I absolutely agree with you. I'm <coughs> that that uh, Wikipedia is a huge selling point. Um, and as far as software goes, sometimes there can be a negative feedback. You know, if people don't think it's going to be around, then they use it less, and so there's less chance that it'll get developed, and 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 it, that can lead to a, a, a death spiral, I guess, for software. And Wikipedia is a huge uh, block against that. 
Um, yeah, uh, I will say um, I don't think Wikimedia Foundation spinning off MediaWiki would impact that uh, that advantage. Uh, but that's another. But I, you, I'm not sure you were implying that. So uh, maybe it doesn't matter. Uh, yeah, no, I, absolutely. I, I think uh, yeah, kudos to the Wikimedia Foundation and all the developers of MediaWiki. I, I you know obviously I, uh, they produce great software and uh, and uh, we you know we wouldn't be here without uh, without MediaWiki and Wikipedia. Um, for the first thing, uh, there's be yeah, there's, there is benefit uh, for outside usage, but it's I would say it's 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 I, I shouldn't have said there's no benefit. They don't benefit, but it's more tangential, I guess I would say, than than actually making any money. There's no financial benefit, I guess. Okay, all right, we'll agree on that. <clears throat> I'll just interject. Briefly, and first of all, yes, exactly everything he said. I was going to say it if he didn't. Um, and I can actually speak from inside the foundation and say, yeah, we do hugely <laughs> appreciate you well. I, in my role, and the reason I joined the foundation was exactly because um, I do believe that there is benefit in both directions from um, third party media wiki use. So, yes, absolutely. Any other questions? In, in the context of the for use in the enterprise, um, one of the things that have been approached before regarding the use of MediaWiki, uh, opposed to some, opposed to something like SharePoint, would be security for some content uh, to be able to, you know, fence it based on group membership or some sort uh, something like that. I've, I've looked at you know the extensions out there, and there's always a quote on security uh, that you know. You might be able to filter it some way, but it, it's not secure. There's always a back door somewhere that, because it's obviously not supposedly not engineered. It's engineered to be open. Um, so, what are your thoughts on that? Um, yeah, yeah. You're talking about uh, security, like uh, some pa some pages being restricted only to certain people on on a wiki, right? right. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I mentioned approved revs as an example of helping with write access, but I didn't say anything about read access because that's just that's a whole uh, can of worms. I mean, um, <clears throat> I, as far as I know, there there still is no really completely secure uh, way to to have data on your wiki that you can guarantee only people who can uh, read it will see. The do uh, Mark do you want to Interject on that. Uh, no, my presentation is not on that. But um, I, I, I can. Well, I, I know about this. You know, like we could talk about it later if you want. But basically, MediaWiki has some good for most actions, user rights management. But in a lot of places, when it comes to reading, it has good support for nobody can read, right? but it doesn't have good support for fine-grained read access. A lot of places yeah. in caching kind of, like, you know, assumes that either everyone who can read the wiki can read everything or you're only allowed to read, like, a few select pages. Um, it's kind of, as you said, it wasn't an engineering goal, so there's a bunch of places that take shortcuts or assumptions around that that make per-page read access not work very well. Well, maybe in the future that will be fixed. Yeah, I'm going to snipe you here. So uh, in our experience at NASA over the past seven plus years, um, we've talked about this quite a bit. We wanted initially to have fine grain access control, um, but we were afraid to implement that because we didn't trust it fully. And we've actually learned to embrace the opposite approach in that initially we created lots of wikis um, per org code. And actually, um, Eric and Vince are going to talk about that, about how we realized our mistake there. And we started reducing the number of wikis and structuring each wiki catered on the broadest possible user set based on the security level required for the data within that wiki. And this is kind of the opposite approach from pretty much every other software tool you can find in a workplace, as far as I can tell. And I think that it's a smart thing to do because it's rather than defaulting to hide information and only share it when applicable, we are forcing people to say, no, who can not see this information? And we put it in the right bucket based on that, and we try to minimize those buckets. 
So there, there are, though, tools to do it, like lockdown and, and certain things that I've done with other companies that uh, allow you to lock down namespaces, which is not per page uh, read restrictions. But even, even what I've done, it has some, you know, it depends how secure you want to think you are. Uh, do you want to think that, you know, hackers can't get in? You know, they can, then MediaWiki probably isn't your answer. I'm not sure any software fits that bill, but I don't know. Well, yeah, you could, you could also pay me, you know, uh, for another year of work, and I could make it do that. I'll, oh, yeah, I'll also say, oh, no, I'll also say that uh, Semantic MediaWiki are, uh, and Cargo are prime violators of any security uh, issues, because if there's uh, semantic stored data on a page, everyone will be able to see it, regardless of what page it's on. Yeah. So, Cindy, this might, question may actually be for you, and I'm sure everybody here may very well know the answer, but we went through the slides saying all the ways that the Wiki Foundation doesn't make money, and I know my management has critiqued our our statement that we're going to work with the, the foundation or to help us, as in what's in it for them. So my question is, how do you make money, and how is it that you can support us in this way, in this endeavor? How do we make money? Um, donations for the Wikimedia project. And so, um, yeah, the, and I think Yaron said this earlier, that nobody tends to make donations just, or I don't know, David might even be answer, able to answer this question better. Um, he's in our fundraising tech um, department. But generally, people do not make do donations earmarking it for MediaWiki. Yeah. Oh, there yeah, was the actually, software. there was like a Sloan Foundation grant, uh, yeah, like in 2010 or something to, uh, okay. doesn't matter. But, but <laughs> yeah, time. so the question <clears throat> is, donations coming in to support the Wikimedia projects, and that's, you know, really user-facing tools and the, it's not earmarked for the infrastructure. Um, but the infrastructure is necessary and important. So if you're talking about the MediaWiki software, the lifeblood of this, which I think it is, um, that software is going to continue, um, as Denny said, you know, to grow and, and to exist going forward because it has to be there to support um, you know, and as I said, you know, prior to joining the foundation, I worked for 10 years for um, an organization that advised the federal government on um, technology, and we did have a practice developing wikis for government customers, and that was one of the things that we did say, you know, you look at Wikipedia, and it exists, it will continue to exist, and this software does power it. That being said, there are some really unique use cases um, for enterprise use of the MediaWiki software that are not strictly beneficial to the Wikimedia movement. Things like your own mentioned at the end, um, OAuth, which it, strike through, right, pluggable auth there. Oh. Um, <laughs> I wrote that one. Yeah. Um, so yes, it, it single sign-on to enter, <clears throat> allow you to interact with enterprise authentication test systems, that's super important. Um, for enterprise users, maybe not so much for the foundation. Um, so, but there's a community of enterprise users out there who are using these things. And I do think that there's merit. I think that there are very actively discussions being had for the support of third, what makes sense for the support of third party users. We do not know the answer to that yet. I have ideas, I think a lot of the people in this room have ideas about what would make sense there. And I encourage us all to continue to talk about that and move towards some solution where there is um, intentional support for enterprise users of MediaWiki. Maybe not within the foundation, maybe with, but it needs to happen. So just to talk about like funding, um, I, I, there are some situations where we've heard really compelling stories or where uh, people inside the Wikimedia Foundation want to form a team and then instead of like increasing our specific annual budget, 
we actually look for a restricted grant that just works for that project. And there's a couple teams that have uh, been funded and are continuing and sustaining on a couple of uh, overlapping grants uh, within the organization that's not part of our regular pool. Uh, but then also, like, we do have a grant program that uh, uh, does fund a lot of media wiki development. Um, uh, and uh, I believe that's only happening once a year at this point around uh, October, November, um, but you could make out, uh, you could apply for a grant to work on specific extensions and things like that. Um, and they're, they're, they're regularly getting funded for just regular media wiki uses. So. Cool. And I just want to say that all of our sponsors probably um, are here because they support media wiki and the enterprise. <laughs> recognizing there's a need. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, thank you to the sponsors. Uh, yes. Yeah. <clears throat> Anybody so, want to see uh, how much time do we have left? Five we've minutes? got like about five minutes left. Yes. I was going to actually ask a question to the audience because oh, okay. I, I, launching off of your second last slide <clears throat> of um, popular oh. um, or important enterprise media wiki extensions, yeah. <laughs> I think there are others too that aren't on that list. Oh and yeah, there's and, a, yeah, and, that's a lot. That's yeah, because you, yeah, the dot 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 at the end, right? So I was going to ask um, the folks here who are using MediaWiki what um, <clears throat> they think is an or essential or a suite of essential essential extensions that they use that they couldn't survive without. <clears throat> Yeah, I'll take this opportunity to advertise Watch Analytics. Uh, uh, James is the primary developer on that, but we've got other people contributing to it. The goal of that extension is to simplify and make a more forward user interface for the watch list. So this helps to track um, how much each page within a wiki is actually reviewed instead of making the assumption that uh, the content of your wiki is actually current. This actually helps you uh, quantify that on a per page level um, and it simplifies the user interface so that each user knows which pages have been updated and gives them kind of a workflow. Um, and a recent addition also ties in the approved revs extension so that it's all on one interface. Yeah, 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 that's cool. Uh, watch, I, watch. Watch analytics, yeah. <clears throat> Sorry, can you say that again? Watch analytics. Uh, so this uh, comment uh, falls in with the question of uh, data being leaked out. And one of the solutions that I've uh, implemented, I run a, a wiki farm of, uh, you know, 9 to 12 different wikis. Each one has its own um, uh, security approval. And what I have found is, is originally I started looking into it with the idea of hoping that MediaWiki or some extension would provide the security that I was looking for. And the solution that I settled on was um, to rely on, on an external wrapper around the entire application. And so while it's still true that MediaWiki software is not, uh, is not, does not set out to provide this uh, security to not leak information, uh, you can wrap MediaWiki in, in a uh, security application that allows some other external control mechanism to decide who gets in and, and who, who, has, who has the ability to see anything at all. Um, having implemented that uh, on multiple different wikis, what I now find to be the, the desired goal is the ability to sync data between the wikis. And many users may already be familiar with something called uh, shared tables. Uh, on the back end, I know that a lot of um, in the enterprise media wiki um, applications, a lot of a lot of people find it valuable to have one common user table. Um, but what I'm looking to do is to pick specific uh, pages and have them be automatically synced with other wikis. So there may be one wiki that I use that is for broad general access um, that would collect data. 
um, but then I would want that data to be automatically pushed into other wikis that the, that the person supplying the data may not have access to. So there is an extension called Sync. Um, it's new. Uh, I personally haven't implemented it yet, but it's on my list of things to do this year. And between the combination of individually wrapping each wiki in its own security wrapper, and then uh, the, my strategy of trying to move data, synchronize data between wikis with different security roles, um, I'm hoping to implement that with the sync extension. Uh, I hope that's helpful to someone. Okay, so um, the wrapper that I use is an old wrapper in the industry. As you can imagine, it's, it's a Computer Associates CA policy agent. Um, and it's, uh, they make a, a plug-in that uh, acts as a man in the middle between Apache and the application. And uh, so it works on the server with a remote identity provider. Once it establishes, the users arrive at my wiki and they are pre-qualified, they are, they are authenticated, they are uh, authorized, and, uh, and the browser then knows who they are, and I, maybe that's more, more of the answer. Um, CA policy agent, SiteMinder, um, with, uh, with an Apache uh, backend uh, is, is what that wrapper looks like for me. Thanks. Yeah. All right. Um, one that I think we use a lot, um, Eric especially, um, is is re uh, replace text is hugely uh, important um, on enterprise use cases. Um, you know, for us, you know, our server moves or an org reorg happens and everybody changes from you know having a a D at the beginning of their org code, now it's a C, and it's like, you have to go and fix that all across <coughs> tens of thousands of pages. And with MediaWiki, just being able to do that in seconds, you know, going to your boss and saying, yeah, it's done. And them saying, wow, like, how, how did you do that on 50,000 pages, essentially, instantly, is, you know, it's incredible. Cool. Uh, yeah, replace text is now bundled in with MediaWiki, so, so it's sort of out of my hands at this point, I guess, yeah. <clears throat> okay. No, I just, since I'm your biggest fan, I want to mention uh, display title. <laughs> what? Display title. Oh, okay. Uh, Seriously, we're running out of time. Would, I just want to plug the wiretap extension written by James um, because people miss page counts. Did and you can more? continue this dis okay. Wait, I'm sorry, was there one more? <clears throat> I'll let you say it quick. Okay, so I guess there's two separate things. The first one would be that I'm, I'm surprised Scribunto wasn't there because I'm thinking about which one could I live without more cargo or Scribunto, and I don't actually know. Like, both of those. Um, Scribunto is really important, but I guess the other thing that I would say is um, another thing I find completely essential but isn't an extension is using auto wiki browser and PyWikiBot. Um, and both of those, like, they're not technically extensions because they're not actually on the wiki, but they're so core to general workflow that I would consider them as important as the extensions. I'm going to talk about PyWikiBot a little bit in my talk, which I think is tomorrow. Cool. Okay. Well. I think we've got plenty to talk about over break. Okay. We're going to take a break now for, well, until, um, yeah, until 11, I guess. 30 minutes, 27 minutes. And um, how are we doing on that live stream? Maybe. Maybe. Maybe, during the break. Maybe during the break we'll get the live stream up. Awesome. Enjoy your break and see you back here in 27 minutes. Thank you.